Hi, I'm Lance Loken with The Loken Group. And I'm Karina Loken. And today we're going to talk to you about tips and tricks for planning a stellar and super successful planning advance for your 2020 year. And why did you call it planning advance? Well, we certainly believe around here that words really matter. And planning advance was a term actually that I think Lance might have coined a few years back because when you think about your business planning, usually people call it a retreat. But that word to us means going backwards. And one thing that we're really super committed to is always forging ahead and dominating and setting new goals and achieving them. We've always wanted to make sure that we're planning in September because our leading measures for the business they all start October the 1st. We always have figured on a 90 day turn time. And so turn time being from the time we need a lead until the time that it closes. So in theory, anything that we generate as a brand new lead October the 1st, it's gonna close starting in January. Right. That's awesome. And when we're planning ahead, we always need to budget stuff because we don't know what we're gonna spend or what the reasons are why we're spending it, right? Absolutely. So it's imperative that you start in September, October 1st is the beginning of the year, and your business should be starting with the leading measures in October, and then the lagging measures will start occurring in January when you want the business to be closing, right? So. For sure. Now, I, I know that you mentioned like what you're spending for the following year in your business planning. There's been a lot of talk this year about profit first. Yes. Right? Yep. So how does that get figured into the planning advance? So the way we do it is we figure out our profit percentage first and then work everything else backwards from that. Because if you don't run a profitable business, then what are you in business for at the beginning of any time? Right. So when we do our planning advance each year, we do the state of the company. We show where we started, where we're at today and where we're going and where we're headed because you need to show people how they feel and fit their lives into where TLG is going or where the business is going. Right. Thankfully, Lance has always been uh, really fantastic about tracking all of our numbers and the sources where all of our business comes from also. And that way we can always measure what our return on investment is or our ROI. And we can really see where most of our business came from in years past, where we've seen trends of things increasing or decreasing. And that helps us make a lot of really more educated decisions about what we want to continue doing or maybe even ramp up and invest more in or scale back. Yep. The other thing we do is we try to focus on one major item each year. And when we first started out, we worked with buyers. Then we realized that we should work with sellers. And then we regionalized the team. We started on the radio. We created a new construction division. We created a commercial division. One thing each year was our focus so that we could master it and then grow from that point because then you have the platforms right. to build upon each other. Well, and, and we've often been asked like, you know, how in the world can we even decide? How do you guys pick what your one thing is for the following year? And it's really very interesting, you know, because we're so super focused on our one thing from the year before, by usually June or July, right? Every year, it's almost as if our one thing has presented itself. Yep. Um, sometimes it's more like an opportunity because of a key hire that we've made during the year and some opportunity that comes as a result, or maybe it's because of what somebody's internal, what one of the folks from internally in TLG's big goals are. That's how our commercial division came to be. And the timing and the readiness was just really right for us. And other times it's because of gaps that we see in our business that like this past year has been communication. And it, there was no doubt for anybody on the team that this year that really needed to be our focus and where we could really, really improve our client experience. Yep. And now we're focused on what the gaps are in our business for next year. And everybody's looking at their key KPIs or key performance indicators right. to see where the gaps are in our business and where we can um, close that gap to become more efficient and better. Sure. And for people that don't know what a KPI is, 
right? I think the best way I've heard it explained, it's almost like your scoreboard. Um, our coach, John Vandergast, gave us kind of the uh, metaphor of using it like a football scoreboard where you're always watching um, as you're trying to get closer to the win or your goal, um, but it's a constant number in flux so that you can constantly be numbering, watching your business. Something really special that we do every year for our planning advance is we include everybody. And when we say everybody, we mean everybody, right? So it's not just our leadership team. Um, it's not just the leaders of each of the departments. It's not just a couple of key folks who are like our core group, um, kind of like your ALC and the market centers. It's actually really, truly every single member of our organization because we feel they're all gonna be a part of making the following year's goals happen and achieving um, together and they should be part of the decision making and have a lot of input too. Yeah, even when we um, were a couple of years ago, we talked about our mission statement and it didn't resonate with a lot of people and a couple of people came to us and said, hey, we don't resonate with this, we'd like to change it and the entire organization got together and we created the mission statement that we have today. So it's all about collaboration and getting buy-in from all parties involved. Well, and certainly when we've done that, or you know, each year after we've had that event, just the momentum that that creates with all the members of the team, um, we oftentimes then each department has gone on to really set their individual department goals based off of what our corporation goals are so that they have a lot of clarity inside their departments and even then setting their individual goals so that they're really clear on what their lane is going to be and everybody can really see how their pieces fit together that our whole team is going to come together and hit our big goal for the year. Yep. You know, one of the huge things that we do is we plan ahead at all times. We're looking 12 to 24 months ahead of schedule instead of just looking at now. And that's how we've created the organizational charts. It's for next year, it's for two years from now. And that way we can hire to those organizational charts, right? Right, well, you know, just the MREA teaches us to start always. I think most good leadership books start with the end in mind, right? When you're planning your business. So we have our business planned out 10 years in advance. And for us to hit that 10 year mark, then what do we need to be doing each year as kind of a stacking achievement so that we hit that goal at the end? Well, along with hitting those different metrics each year comes, you know, making sure that we have all the right folks to be a part of the, the achievement. Yep. For more information or to learn more about our 2020 planning advance, go to tlgshares.com.